what should we eat with MS or other neurodegenerative diseases? Good question. I've been living with MS for almost two decades now, and diet has been a big area of interest for me. I've been learning a lot about diet and adjusting my diet to support my body to be as healthy as it can be along the way. There is so much to learn about diet and so many resources and studies out there. Oh, and speaking of resources, I'm going to put together a free handout of some of the delicious and healthy foods and recipes that you can access in the comments and in the description below. When I do videos on diet, I try to cite several resources and I also try to look at the work of well-respected and credible scientists and researchers. Today, I'm going to share information from just one review because I really like it. It's comprehensive and gives excellent recommendations for diet choices that we can make to support our neurological health. It was published in 2024 and came out of the Netherlands. And I'll also put a link in the description below if you would like to read it too. They go over how important diet is to neurological health and say nutrition plays a crucial role in maintaining health and well being, with growing evidence suggesting its importance for brain function and that there is an increasing interest in the role of diet in managing and preventing various neurological and psychiatric disorders, particularly through anti-inflammatory effects. It also says the gut microbiota plays a vital role in the gut-brain axis. So we really need to eat like we give a damn. Everything we eat has the ability to help us or harm us, so it's important that we make the best diet choices we can. In a nutshell, they say we should be eating an anti-inflammatory diet instead of a pro-inflammatory diet. They share that the gut microbiota's influence extends beyond the gastrointestinal tract through the gut-brain axis. One key aspect of this axis is the production of short-chain fatty acids by gut bacteria through the fermentation of dietary fibers. Short-chain fatty acids, particularly butyrate, have anti-inflammatory properties and may influence brain function and behavior. Although direct clinical evidence is scarce, the dietary effects include improvements in symptoms such as fatigue, lower unstable mood, sensitivity to stress, and cognitive dysfunctions. Hmm, fatigue, depression, stress sensitivity, and cognitive dysfunction are all symptoms of MS. I want to improve all those, do you? Let me know in the comments below if you struggle with any of these symptoms. The next way that this way of eating may help us is with inflammation. Chronic low-grade inflammation, including neuroinflammation, is a common feature in many mental disorders and neurodegenerative diseases. Dietary components can either exacerbate or mitigate this inflammation. MS is an inflammatory disease, so if we can keep inflammation low, maybe we can do better. Go figure! The third way this diet can help us is with oxidative stress and lowering of free radicals. Oxidative stress has been implicated in the pathogenesis of many mental disorders and neurodegenerative diseases with evidence of increased oxidative damage in brain tissues. By reducing oxidative stress, these dietary components may help protect against neuronal damage and dysfunction. And when it comes to diseases that affect the brain, the review has this to say. Neuroprotection and neuroplasticity are additional mechanisms by which diet may influence these disorders. Certain dietary components, such as omega-3 fatty acids and flavonoids, have been shown to promote the expression of neurotropic factors like brain-derived neurotropic factor, which is crucial for neuronal survival and plasticity. Okay, so eating an anti-inflammatory diet is really good for us. Let's dive into what they have to say about the specifics of the diet that can help us. There are four groups of foods that have the benefits that we're looking for. The first group is fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables are cornerstone components of anti-inflammatory diets. Rich in vitamins, minerals, dietary fibers, and bioactive compounds such as polyphenols, these foods have been associated with reduced risks and improved outcomes in several mental disorders and neurodegenerative diseases. Huh, a predominantly plant-based diet is good for us. Our fruits and vegetables are full of antioxidants like vitamin C and E, carotenoids, and flavonoids to help combat oxidative stress. They're also full of fiber that we need to feed our gut microbiome, and they're anti-inflammatory. There are over 20,000 kinds of edible plants out there. 
some of my favorite ways to increase my fruit and vegetable intake is with salads, smoothies, soups, and stews. I'll include recipes for my berry smoothie, my tropical smoothie, and my lentil barley stew in the handout. Next is whole grains. Whole grains provide a complex array of nutrients, including dietary fiber, B vitamins, and various phytochemicals. These compounds may support gut health, reduce inflammation, and provide neuroprotective effects. Eating whole grains can help lower inflammation, feed our gut microbiota, and help to create short-chain fatty acids that can help with brain function. Some of my favorite grains are barley, bulgur, farro, and quinoa. Although quinoa is technically a seed, it's often classified as a grain. I have a chili recipe made with bulgur that is amazing that I'll put in the handout, and also a lovely quinoa arugula salad that has a wonderful mix of spicy and sweet flavors. The next is legumes, which include beans, peas, and lentils. The health benefits of legumes are awesome. They include protein, fiber, B vitamins, iron, folate, calcium, potassium, phosphorus, and zinc. But there's not a lot of research on legumes and neurodegenerative diseases, but they were included in this paper because they're part of an anti-inflammatory diet and they're a great source of protein. Because they're rich in fiber, protein, and various micronutrients, they may contribute to overall health and potentially brain health. I highly recommend including them regularly in our diets. I'll include my recipe for an aromatic red lentil dal that's super easy to make, and my smoky vegan split pea soup, which is so fulfilling and is one of my favorite comfort foods. The next food in the study is fish. They include fish as a protein source being high in omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3s are really important to brain health and can also help with depression. As I try to live a vegan lifestyle, fish are not on the menu for me. My concerns with eating fish are around contamination and environmental impacts. There are also reports of high levels of microplastics in fish, and there are concerns that these pose severe health risks, including the onset and acceleration of neurodegenerative diseases. That said, there's no doubt that omega-3s are good for our brains. I cut out the middle fish, and I take algae oil supplements, and I will link them below if you'd like to check them out. I also make sure to regularly include foods rich in omega-3s in my diet, including ground flax seeds, chia seeds, hemp hearts, edamame or soybeans, walnuts, Brussels sprouts, kidney beans, kale, and wild rice. Tofu is a good source of omega-3s, and I will include two of my favorite recipes in the handout, garlic scrambled tofu and spicy marinated tofu. The paper goes on to talk about some other foods that can be helpful, such as fermented foods, some nuts, and some anti-inflammatory spices and herbs, but this video is getting a bit long. I'll leave a link to the study in the description below if you'd like to check it out. The question of the day is, have you changed your diet since your diagnosis? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to get your free handout with a link in the comments and in the description below. To see even more on the benefits of omega-3s, watch this video next. And until next time, be well.